Hello, 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 everybody. Hey, hello, hey. Everybody. how's it going? Not bad. How's it going? Good, good. I'm excited to finally get this going. Um, it's been a big month for for us, and we're happy to finally have yourself and Brad join us later today. Uh, just a quick introduction for for everyone currently with us. My name is Andy. I'm the digital coordinator here at Chrome Declared Canada. I'm joined now by Renee, who is going to be talking about her IBD journey, her life with an ostomy, and kind of how uh, her life has benefited since she's gotten it. So in honor and celebration of Ostomy Awareness Day, uh, which occurred earlier this month, we're going to have these two fantastic individuals join us to chat about their lives and uh, go from there. So without further ado, this is Renee from Toronto, Ontario. And uh, Renee, if you wanted to give a quick introduction about yourself, you can jump into things. Okay, so a little bit about myself, if people who don't know me, uh, my name's Renee. Um, and I have uh, this platform for, called Beautifully Broken. I've actually had Crohn's for, oh my goodness, I don't even know. I was nine, so it's probably about 27 years now, which seems very, very long when you think about it. Um, and I've had uh, severe Crohn's probably most of my life, so severe to moderate Crohn's most of my life. Um, and I started uh, this page probably... Uh, a few months before I had my ostomy surgery. So I created Beautifully Broken and just this space just for myself. Uh, I know it sounds weird, but I, all my life, I never really shared uh, about my Crohn's journey with the people that I loved, even like really close friends, simply because when you're growing up with, with Crohn's and when you're growing up with an invisible illness, it's really hard to find people who relate to you. And during that time, I didn't have and many people that I knew personally. So I made the decision not really to share it as much. I just wanted it to be normal. Um, so Beautifully Broken was kind of like my coming out, so to speak, um, but also allowing me to kind of walk through the process of having this ostomy. So I've had the ostomy now for four years, almost four years, not not quite, but almost. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. No, it, it's a pleasure to have you here. So yeah, we'll, we'll kick things off here. So Renee, well, we've tried it before. You have, you've had quite the influence and your story has reached uh an incredible amount of people um on social media especially for those who may not know so you've just kind of shared an IV journey as a whole but so you're coming up on four years with an ostomy what's something or something that you'd like to let people know that may not know uh everything about them anything um, about them? I think I was a part of the group of people who um the uh, the the opportunity I guess or maybe the conversation of having an ostomy is not new like it happened probably four years to actually getting the ostomy. And I was scared, right? So I didn't know anything. I don't think I knew a lot of people on social media at that point. Um, so I guess I would tell people about ostomy and getting an ostomy is that, you know, try to reach out to people who have ostomies because you don't know what you don't know. And I know that's such a cliche word to say, but I was a part of that group of people that like, I was very like, I can't do this. Like, I'm still young. I have my whole life ahead of me. Like I was so much into what it looked like and I missed almost the opportunity of what it could give me. So I lived my whole life being very sick and having the surgery was yes, scary. But if I look at myself right now, um, I was able to kind of get my life back or what, I didn't know, like, I, I, again, I had it for so long, I only knew to be sick. Uh, so this time in my life and this period in my life has just been so crazy. It's so wild, because I've never been able to kind of just look at food and eat it. It's always like, oh, is this gonna come out well? Like, I'm going to be <laughs> sick for like five days or like, that was my life. I was so afraid of food. And now it's just like, you just eat, you just eat. I mean, there are some stuff with ostomies. But for the most part, like I eat pretty much everything uh, that I couldn't definitely eat when I had Crohn's. So yeah, ask questions and, and talk to people for sure. Perfect. So you kind of glanced over it, but would you say the best part about having your ostomy is the fact that you no longer have to be accustomed to this life of, we'll say, quote unquote, uh, suffering, basically, like you now get to to live your life or you get to take this life back? Yeah, because I feel like when you're sick for so long, it almost becomes a part of you and you have to kind of plan your life around that, right? So it's like 
like I think the big decision for me when I got my ostomy, the biggest deciding thing was when it affected my social life. So I was staying home a lot. I I, I only had enough spoons to to speak just to kind of like you know do one task a day, and that was usually work. So I would just you know go to work and kind of and show up, and then at home I'd sleep all day. So um, it it kind of gives your life back and you, you kind of learn a new version of yourself, so to speak, especially when you've had it so long. So yeah, it, it definitely, that is definitely a plus. And I mean, I, I don't regret it. I know a lot of people are still going through the motions with ostomies, but for me, it's given me a lot of my life and, and, and certain parts of my life that I never exi- knew existed. So yeah. Yeah. That would be that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, that's, that's exactly it. Like there's, there's there's truly an ugliness that come with these diseases, whether it's colitis or Crohn's, and and ostomy does enable people to get that life back. You're able to get out there instead of being tied to your bed or a couch or a hospital bed or whatever it may be. Um, a brief time getting to know each other, uh, I've seen you as a phenomenal proponent for and role model for those in the IVD and ostomy community. What hope do you have for the future for for both those communities or just all of them as a whole? Um, I think. For IBD and ostomy community, I think they're separate, but then they're also the same, right? So I think just even the word ostomy in the IBD community, I I still don't, I guess now it's a little different, but growing up and and knowing about ostomies and stuff, first of all, I never really called it an ostomy growing up, I called it a bag. So like, and that just, that just shows how much and how much work we need to do to just gain some more visibility around it and just the conversation around it. I think people are still fearful and, and people are still concerned. Like, can I still live? Like, will I have a life out of this? Like, I'd rather be sick than walk around with a bag. So I think just uh, the awareness piece and it's, it's a lot to work. And I've met a a bunch of wonderful people uh, through this platform, but there's a lot of work to do, right? There's, people still have conversations that are negative around it. And I think that's, I think that's the biggest thing that I can kind of think of. That's in, it's, it's incredibly here. Um, you've done a, you've made an incredible effort in advocating for the representation for the ostomy community, uh, especially for people of color. What are you seeing now? And what are you hoping to see in the next few years or next, not so few years? Um, I still think it needs work, um, to be honest. Uh, Growing up, I think that's part of the reason why I never really felt comfortable sharing is because I didn't know um, anyone that looked like me. I always saw like white faces and I never saw anyone of color. So I think there's still a lot of work to do. And what this what this platform has given me kind of an opportunity is to meet people who look like me who aren't necessarily comfortable to share. Like they will send me messages and I, I think we have a lot of work to do. I don't know if a couple years would do it, but if that takes me kind of standing in that gap and kind of meeting other creators who are also of color and standing in that gap, because I'm not the only one, there's a couple of great creators that I've actually met uh, through this platform that are of color as well. I think just keeping the conversation going, like we're out here, even though there's no research about us, we uh-huh. exist, right? And, and we need that because we need that sense of community as well. So I'm just going to keep talking and showing my ass all the time. I guess that's what I'll do. <laughs> exactly. No, as long as you keep yeah. talking, people will listen. Uh, we do have a question here from, uh, hopefully they're going to pronounce this correct. Oh, my care kit. Uh, so they're wondering what can't you eat? Ooh. That was a fun question to uh, answer. That's, with, a, that's uh, a great question. Answer. Instead of saying what you can't eat, because I can eat a lot. Um, what haven't I tried because I'm fearful is probably the better question. Um, mushrooms, because I feel like they're not really great to digest. Um, I would say coconut, but in small doses, I can have coconut. I've had a blockage before, but I ate like whole pieces of like shredded coconut. Not a good idea. Um, <laughs> dried apple, I guess. I'm trying to think of the things that have given me blockages. Um, Corn, obviously, I've never tried. Too afraid. Like, too afraid to try corn. Right. But I can have popcorn, um, which is a controversial um, statement because I know some people with ostomies cannot have it. Um, I can. (laughs) I don't have it a lot. I just make sure I chew. But, yeah, that's actually a great question because I can't think of a list. Like, I can't really put 
in my hand how many things I can't eat. So, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, thank you, my care kit. So we have another one from Dev Wynn. So just, they're just, I guess, wondering what led you to the surgery? Was it, was it failed medication or anything like that? Just stuff that didn't seem to work out that kind of led you to taking the path of the ostomy surgery? Um, for me, it was a few things. Like I mentioned earlier, it started to really impact my social life. Um, I ended up just kind of staying home a lot. But the reason why ultimately we went in that direction was because I had a lot of scar tissue that was from a lot of flares. So I had flare after flare after flare. And those who know who's been who's had Crohn's or colitis for a long time, um, when you have scar tissue, a lot of the times the medication cannot actually recover that like you have to remove the scar tissue to allow the rest of your bowel to heal. So the conversation was kind of lingering with my doctor, but he was very, very helpful and very, very um, kind, I would say, which is hard to find um, to have a doctor that actually cares about your well-being. So he kind of said to me, like, look, we're not able to kind of see if you could have cancer because it's so bad, like the scar tissue is so bad. So I think it's time to start exploring the option of having an ostomy. So again, even though in his head, he's like, yeah, she needs this surgery. He kind of just said to me, we have to start exploring this op this this option. So that kind of led to it. Um, I knew it was, I tried everything, okay? As everyone with IBD does, we try everything. I've done the natural path. I've done like not this, no dairy. I've done all of that. Um, and as you know, like diet doesn't cure anything. So, well, for some people, diet doesn't cure. So yeah, it was kind of just a lot of scar tissue that medication would not work. Right. No, it's exactly. That, that's the story. Myself as well. I've had mm -hmm. two resections. I had a temporary ostomy. Like I had an ostomy put in for, simply for that reason. The the bowels were that scarred and that stricture that simply had to remove in order for my body to start healing itself again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have another question from It's Nay. Uh, I don't, uh, were you or are you still taking Remicade um, that you wanted to ask? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I did take Remicade. I think I took it for like, two years and no I'm not on any medication and I don't have any symptoms I mean here or there I am a crony that gets uh, arthritis um so sometimes like when the weather is a little bit you know I'll get like a little bit of arthritis pain but I haven't had any so um knock on some wood <laughs> um but yeah I've been very lucky I did speak to somebody um about this and they said they spoke with someone uh, who has an ostomy and they also said that it's very rare to have somebody who's also medication and symptom free. So I, I, I am aware of this, like I've, I've been really blessed and I've been very fortunate, but yeah, no, I'm not on Remicade. Don't have to sit yeah. for three or four hours and watch my favorite show. I don't miss that. Yeah. I had my treatment this morning actually, and couldn't, they missed the vein on my left arm twice and then had to go to my right arm. So I have ice packs on both of my uh, elbow areas, which is always nice. fun. Yeah, um, nice. Well, there's no more questions. Renee, if there's anything you'd like to wrap up with just to kind of share with the, the people we have online and then we can uh, welcome Brad to the stage. But uh, before then, I'd like for you to, if there's anything fun you'd like to say, if there's any last minute kind of questions for Renee, who's uh, been great and helped. Uh, I know she has a very busy schedule, so it's awesome to have you here for the for the 15, 20 minutes that we've had her. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know. I mean, if anyone has any questions, I mean, my page is always open. Um, I think people forget that although I have an ostomy now and, and I'm not on medication and I don't have symptom, symptoms, they forget that I, I live that life. So I know everything, everything that you can think of, I experience in terms of... Uh, symptoms again i had like pretty much every manifestation that you can think of for crohn's so if you have questions for me i'd try my best to kind of say like what my experience was so yeah i'm still you know even though i'm ostomy life ostomy proud whatever you want to call it um i you can reach out to me yeah awesome Alrighty. again thank you so much renee i know you and i will chat soon but uh Hope yeah, like hope everyone is able to to grab something. Renee's like she said, open book, and she's she's able to reach out. And uh, thank you once again. We know it just took a little bit to get together, but this was awesome. And um, if you're sticking around, Brad is a phenomenal story as well, and uh, we'll get to hear his story. So with that, Renee, we'll say see you later, and we'll have a good weekend. All right, thanks, guys.
see you. So we are welcoming Brad to the scene, who's been very active in the chat. So I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to come and chat with us. Everybody, this is Brad. Brad is from Chilliwack, BC. Yep. And, er, yep. and he is going to be chatting, uh, telling us about his story. Um, very happy to have him. What's what's awesome to hear. So Renee, we we just found out has had her ostomy for roughly four years, and and Brad is relatively new. So Brad, before I start talking too much, if you want to give a little bit of background on yourself and your IBD journey. Okay. Well, I'm not the best at speaking out loud. I do better behind texts and posts and all that. But uh, I've had Crohn's for about 23 years. Uh, ostomy for just under three months. So I'm new to the ostomy game, but doing well. Uh, I bounced out of all biologics, all medical options possible. Went through three or four biologics in less than two years. And I am one of those people that treated an ostomy like it was the last resort. I almost had one 12 years ago or so. And at that point, I thought that was like, that's it. I'm done. This sucks. And I'm honestly proud of myself for how far I've come from then to now, where now I'm just like, hey, this is it. This is permanent. So I should have the best attitude going into it because there's no coming out of it. Right, exactly. I remember we've, we've chatted before and how uh, you, you've almost said that you should maybe should have had the surgery 12 years or just the way you've been able to um, the last few weeks, like you've traveled, you've done your thing, you've been able to, to live your life um, healthily and, and happy and, and being able to get back to being Brad. Yeah. It's been, it's been really good. It's been good. I just spent uh, the other weekend there playing with my, my little nephews running around for a few hours. It, I haven't done that in years. It was amazing. All thanks to Sean, my ostomy. <laughs> Sean, yes. So though uh, life with Sean is, is quite new to you, um, what do you want people to know about your life with the ostomy the last, I guess, I want to say two months now you've had it? And for a lot of people, I think there's a lot of confusion about what an ostomy actually is and how it helps. Is there is there any words of advice or stuff that you'd like to say to help clarify those um, any, any of that confusion or any, anything of that nature? So I, I guess I'm one of the lucky ones in the fact that I knew ahead of time that I was going in for this surgery. I know a lot of people kind of get it sprung on them, and I can understand how hard it can be when you're in that type of situation, as I was almost there uh, years ago. I went into this basically trying to have the best attitude I can. I went in. I had my ostomy, like, nurse appointment, and I had my samples. So I chose to wear the bag for 72 hours straight. I put it on me. I tried to figure, like, this is what it feels like. Obviously, there's no replicating the actual uh, effects of an ostomy. But getting used to it just being there was a start. Uh -huh. And then the other thing was definitely reaching out to a community. Like, as I was about, I think, just under a week away, I reached out to a few communities and they honestly, the ostomy community is so loving and helpful and there to help anyone in need. And they helped me be ready. Be ready as can be. There's obviously certain things you can't prepare for. You just got to have the best attitude going forward. Exactly. I think a lot of people with these diseases, like uh, I've had Crohn's since I was nine. It's literally just, you have to have the attitude if yeah, um, it's a it's a big part mentally and physically like the mental affects the physical and, and vice versa obviously but it's once you have that attitude that you know what like as long as i am okay then you'll get through it um so with all that being said what what would you say is the the best part about having one actually we have a couple questions rolling in here i'd like sure. to before uh, i lose them so uh uh it's they asked what the recovery process was for you like how how are you post op so I, I know I'm lucky. I had a really good surgeon. Uh, I'm told one of the best non-invasive surgeons in BC. Um, so I know my healing process is a little, like went really, really well. 
due to the fact that they did their best not to overtax my body during surgery. Um, so my recovery process has actually been pretty good. The, I would say the first couple weeks were a learning process. I, you know, as, as anyone does, I had my accidents. I had to figure out the process, get my equipment, my gear, what works, what doesn't. Now I'm two and a half months through, and honestly, Sean Wise, I don't really notice anything half the time. Like, it's he's part of me, and I've moved on. It's the Barbie butt that likes to still let me know that things are happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a <laughs> life of high PD. Um, <laughs> with, so with, with all of that being said, what would you say is uh, the best part about having it? Uh, I know we kind of glanced over it, but in, in your own words and, and wholeheartedly, what would you say? Honestly, uh, spending 23 years uh, doing the, the the IBD roller coaster, as I like to call it, you go up and you're like, oh, things are good, things are good. And then it's that, okay, here we go, here we go. We're going to keep going down. And you don't know when that, that loop's going to come back up again. And it's just a constant cycle of, like, rolling the roller coaster. And now I feel like I've hit a nice flat plane where I can concentrate and I kind of like I'm excited to get back to the things I was doing before because it, every time I started up, Mr. Crohn's would kick in and be like, nah, <laughs> not now. Exactly. Yeah, that's um, you hear that a lot. It's the it's the stability. It's the um, the the fear of you're not having to wake up every day. And, OK, how how many trips to the washroom am I going to take or what can I eat today? What, what, what's going to happen there? So there's a, there's a peace of mind that definitely comes with having a, an ostomy or um, nearly ostomy, but like a different sort of pelvic pouch that, that provides a massive peace of mind and a sense of sense of calm, um, especially with living with these diseases. The, so um, again, so like what, what type of future uh, do you see for, are you hoping for, or do you, do you wish to see, or are you seeing now that um, is going to hopefully escalate into something more positive uh, for this community? I, so going forward, I went into this community with two goals. One, to learn everything I can, because honestly, I, kept ostomy information kind of this to the side it was like I, that's not my that's not my area yet if i get to it i get to it i'll learn and i i'm there so i'm learning everything but also trying to use my platform to show people that it's not as scary as some might see and with that, I did my photo series, which was used for part of the uh, promotional materials where i I'm working on the photos from post or pre-op, post-op, post-recovery, and then our post-recovery, two months, six months, and a year. So I want to show people everything, the, the good, the bad, but just show them that it's not the end. And as I like to say, it's merely merely the start. New doors are opening. Right. And I I love that way of thinking about things. It's the more you look at things as closing, you're, you're going to feel trapped and you're, you're not going to want to get out of that mindset. But if you look at things as a new door opening or new windows opening, it, it allows you to kind of, you're thinking outside of that trapped room and you're allowing yourself to have a better perspective and you're allowing yourself to, to live that life. Um, you've mentioned it time and time again, and here in, in, uh, in our meetings, just kind of one-on-one, but community has obviously played a massive role in your life, whether it's one you've started or one you're kind of joining, um, plays a big part in healing and understanding as, and helping IBD patients. How is the, how has the community helped you and with your surgery recovery and all that's come afterwards? Oh man, the community, especially during the first, um, first couple weeks i was constantly in the communities asking questions like this had this like just telling what was going on even when i had bad days and they were always there a to give me tips advice information but also just there to talk like help me out 
help others out. And going forward, I know that's the type of thing we need to keep focusing on so that others in the same position feel comfortable. I know myself, I already have uh, a few what seem like soon to be ostomy patients. They're in that window where I was, where it looks like it's going to happen. And they've been turning to me, asking me about all the like different things that are going on. And I've been very happy to help like provide the information they're looking for as from someone that's new. So they get that perspective. And so, as you said, I want to do what they did for me. Uh -huh give that information pay it forward as it's commonly uh put correct um so yeah just absolutely hopping off of that you've mentioned to me that you're you're actually you have a it's near and dear to your heart to help out with the the younger generations of mm -hmm. um people dealing with crohn's or colitis or other forms of ibd the how are you doing that specifically, I guess? Like, how are you jumping in and um, how do you plan on furthering that, that journey? So dealing with young folks has always been a challenge of mine, something I've always, like, as you mentioned, it's kind of like uh, one of those bucket list goals for my IBD advocacy. Um, I've always wanted to help the younger generation because I felt, as I'm sure many IBD folks have felt years ago, is that, we're kind of thrown into the deep end. You you get diagnosed and you're just like pushed out a door. It's like, okay, here you go. Like, go figure it out. And there's so many more young people being diagnosed that I want to make sure that we have, we have information there for people in any form that they need because everyone learns different ways. And I want to be there for people and let them know that, like, as I said before, it's not, it's not an end, it's a beginning. And I know how hard it is at a young age when you have, you worry about what others think so much more. Like that was me, I was that. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to show about it. I got bullied in school and it took me years before I became, well, to be honest, I went under my, my uh, uh, comic version self Right. For like so long. And I'm only just recently showing my, my, my face more often. And I, I know that helps give a more personal, uh, personal vibe for people. But yeah, going forward, I just want kids, kids and young people to know that they're, they're not alone. I think that's the main thing. Uh -huh. You're not alone. I was diagnosed, officially diagnosed when I was nine, but there was an eight month period where I was undiagnosed. So I'd like to say I, I, had, yeah. uh, I had Crohn's when I was eight. And if 26 year old Andy could go ahead and talk to eight, nine year old Andy, probably pass on the same message that might suck for a little bit. Um, but the little bit is going to soon be very much outweighed by what's mm -hmm. going to come next. Um, you're not alone. One of the biggest things about uh, being at Crohn's and Colitis Canada and meeting people like yourself is how incredible this community is and how welcoming and how supportive. And um, that's one big thing that regardless of what you're going through in this disease, there, there's always going to be someone there that kind of knows what that knows what you're going through mm -hmm. and is going to be able to help. And uh, I think it's important that we continue having conversations just like this one or one-on-one -on -one or behind closed doors, whatever it is to help out uh, those people that do feel alone, whether they're, they're eight years old or 65 years old. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Brad, if, if there's uh so we've, we're wrapping up here. If there's anything specific or any kind of last words of encouragement or, or advice you'd like to say, um, I'll leave it to the crowd here to ask any questions they'd like, but uh, Brad, if there's any final words uh, that you'd like to impart, um, before the weekend here, if uh, stage is yours. Uh, well, I think I would like to end it off with just the fact of know that you're not alone. Don't be afraid to talk to someone. If you can't, if you don't feel comfortable talking to friends or family because you don't think they're going to understand, reach out, find one of the communities. There are so many IBD communities out there with loving people who are there to help every step of the way. So just don't be afraid to speak up because I know I 
I internalized so much for so long and it just felt so good to be able to connect and share to know that others are going through similar issues. You don't feel so alone. Right. No, that's exactly. Um, it's very good words to think on. And I, and I hope uh, everyone here can take that to heart and, and exercise that. But uh, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. So with that, I, I'll wrap things up here. Um, Brad, thanks so much for, for joining us and, and sharing thanks your story. Know, okay? uh, it was a pleasure. And it's, uh, it's been great meeting you for for those here these uh these conversations uh will be reposted with captions and subtitles and um translated for our french community but uh thank you everyone for joining us brad renee and everyone here with their comments and questions hope you have a phenomenal weekend and uh like brad said if you, if there's questions that you need answered re be sure to reach out uh crohn's related colitis related ostomy related or otherwise but uh have a phenomenal weekend everybody and Stay safe. Peter. <laughs> Cheers, everybody.